Elizabeth, or Liz as most people called her, was a middle child in a family that seemed to revolve around her older sister, Kate. From the moment she could remember, their home was a shrine to Kate's existence. Every wall displayed pictures of her first smile, her first steps, or her scribbled drawings, which mom and dad treated like masterpieces. Elizabeth, on the other hand, felt like an afterthought. She got used to wearing Kate's hand-me-downs, playing with her old toys, and learning to keep quiet, to not make a fuss. As the years went by, the pattern continued. Kate received new clothes, Elizabeth got her hand-me-downs. Kate got the latest toys, Elizabeth got the ones Kate had outgrown. Elizabeth never complained, she simply existed. High school came and went, and Kate had already moved out, off to college on a scholarship. Elizabeth hoped her parents might finally notice her, but their focus remained on Kate's college adventures, her new boyfriend, and her future. Then came the big announcement. Kate burst into the house one Sunday afternoon, beaming with excitement. Mom, Dad, I'm getting married, she squealed, as if she had just announced a cure for cancer. Mom burst into tears, Dad started whooping and hollering. Elizabeth just sat there, wondering if anyone remembered she was in the room. Kate turned to her, eyes shining. Lizzie, you'll be my bridesmaid, right? Elizabeth nodded, forcing a smile. Sure, Kate. Congratulations. As they all hugged and cried and laughed, Elizabeth slipped out of the room, unnoticed as always. Kate's wedding turned out to be a bigger deal than anyone had anticipated. One evening, Elizabeth overheard her parents talking in hushed tones in the kitchen. We'll have to take out a loan, Dad said, his voice strained. Mom sighed. I know, but it's Kate's big day. We can't let her down. A knot formed in Elizabeth's stomach. They were going into debt for Kate's wedding. She wanted to point out how crazy this was, but she knew better. Her opinions didn't matter much in this house. The wedding was a lavish affair. Kate looked like a princess, and her parents beamed with pride. Elizabeth stood there in her bridesmaid dress, feeling invisible as always. After the honeymoon, Kate dropped another bombshell. I've decided to be a housewife, she announced over Sunday dinner. Jack makes enough for both of us. Mom and Dad exchanged glances. Elizabeth could see the worry in their eyes, but they plastered on smiles. That's wonderful, sweetheart, Mom said. If that's what makes you happy. Elizabeth wanted to scream. They had taken out a loan for her wedding, and now she wasn't even going to work? But Elizabeth kept her mouth shut, pushing her food around her plate. It wasn't long before Kate was pregnant, with twins, no less. Their parents went absolutely nuts. Twins. Dad kept saying, shaking his head in wonder. Can you believe it? Elizabeth could believe it. She could also believe what came next. We should help them buy a house, Mom suggested one night. They'll need the space with two babies on the way. Dad nodded. We could make the down payment on a mortgage. There's that nice place not far from here. Elizabeth couldn't stay quiet anymore. Are you serious, she blurted out. You're already in debt from the wedding, and now you want to buy them a house? They both looked at her like they had forgotten she was there. Maybe they had. Elizabeth, Mom said, her voice stern, this is what family does. We help each other. The twins were born a few months later, two little boys, cute as buttons. Mom and Dad were over the moon, spending every free moment at Kate's new house, cooing over the babies. Meanwhile, Elizabeth was finishing up high school, trying to figure out her next steps. College was the obvious choice, but how was she going to pay for it? One night, she worked up the courage to ask Mom and Dad. I've been looking at colleges, she said. That's nice, dear, Mom said, not looking up from the photo album of the twins she was putting together. I was wondering, could you help me with tuition? They exchanged that look again, the one that said they would rather be talking about anything else. Well, sweetie, Dad started, we'd love to help, but with the loan for Kate's wedding and helping with the house, we can cover half. Mom jumped in. But you'll need to figure out the rest on your own. Elizabeth felt like she had been punched in the gut. Half? 
that's all they could do, after everything they had done for Kate? But she knew arguing was pointless. Okay, she said, her voice small. Thanks. As she walked back to her room, she heard them resume their conversation about the twins' latest accomplishments. She closed her door, leaned against it, and for the first time in years, let herself cry. She managed to get into the local community college, not her dream school, but the only one she could afford with her parents' measly contribution. To make up the difference, she landed a part-time job at a nearby diner. Waiting tables while trying to keep up with college coursework was no picnic. She dragged herself home most nights, dead on her feet, dreaming of her bed, but even that small comfort was often yanked away from her. It started one Friday evening. She had just finished a brutal shift and was looking forward to face planting into her pillow when she walked in to find Kate in their living room, the twins crawling around her feet. Oh, Lizzie, Kate exclaimed. Thank God you're here. I'm at my wit's end with these two. Mind watching them for a bit? Jack and I haven't had a date night in ages. Before Elizabeth could even open her mouth, Kate was out the door, leaving her with two screaming three-year-olds. What the hell? Elizabeth muttered, staring at her nephews. Don't get me wrong, she loved the little terrors, but this wasn't what she signed up for. Mom wandered in from the kitchen. Your sister is exhausted. This is what family does. Besides, it'll be good practice for when you have your own kids. Elizabeth wanted to scream. Kids? She was barely keeping her head above water as it was. This became a regular occurrence. Every weekend without fail, Kate would show up, drop off the twins, and disappear. Sometimes she claimed she had errands, other times she and Jack would go catch a movie or grab dinner, and every time, Elizabeth would end up playing babysitter. One Saturday, after a particularly hellish week of exams, Elizabeth had enough. Kate had just breezed out the door, leaving the twins mid-tantrum. Mom, Dad, she said, trying to keep her voice steady, this isn't fair. I'm exhausted. I work, I study, and now I'm expected to give up my weekends too. Dad barely looked up from his newspaper. Lizzie, your sister needs the help. You should be glad to do it. But what about what I need, she protested. I'm running myself ragged here. Mom sighed. Elizabeth, don't be selfish. Kate has two children to look after. You don't know how hard that is. Elizabeth gave up. It was clear they weren't going to listen. She resigned herself to her fate, classes during the week, work in the evenings, and unpaid babysitting on the weekends. Personal life? That was a joke. Between work, study, and the twins, she barely had time to shower, let alone meet someone. She was at her breaking point. The constant juggle of work, school, and forced babysitting had left her drained, both physically and mentally. She needed a break, a real one, away from everything and everyone. So she made a decision. Mom, Dad, she announced one evening. I'm taking a few days off. Going to the beach. Their reactions surprised her. For once, they actually seemed happy for her. That's wonderful, Lizzie, Mom exclaimed. Where are you going? She told them about the cheap motel she had found online, right by the ocean. Nothing fancy, but it was all she could afford. Dad nodded approvingly. Good for you, kiddo. You deserve a break. Elizabeth almost fell over from shock. Was this really happening? Were they actually acknowledging her needs for once? The day finally came. Elizabeth packed her bag, hopped on a bus, and felt the weight lifting off her shoulders with every mile that passed. When she finally arrived at the coast, she couldn't believe her luck. The motel was small and a bit run down, but the ocean view was spectacular. She dropped her bag in the room and headed straight for the beach. The salty air filled her lungs, and for the first time in months, she felt like she could breathe. She treated herself to lunch at a cute little seaside cafe, savoring every bite. No screaming kids, no homework, no customers to please, just her, her thoughts, and the sound of the waves. As the sun started to set, she headed back to the motel, already planning her evening of peaceful solitude. 
but as she approached her room, she heard familiar voices. Surprise, Lizzie. Elizabeth froze there, standing outside the room next to hers. Mom and Kate were there, with the twins running circles around their legs. What are you doing here? Elizabeth stammered, her heart sinking. We couldn't let you be all alone on your vacation, Mom chirped. So we decided to join you. We're right next door. Elizabeth noticed their suitcases outside one of the nicer rooms, of course. They had splurged on themselves while she was in the budget option. Before Elizabeth could process what was happening, Kate was pushing the twins towards her. The boys have been dying to see the ocean. You don't mind watching them for a bit, do you? I want to take a walk on the beach, and I need to run to the store, Mom added. We'll be back soon. Just like that, they were gone, leaving Elizabeth standing there with two overexcited three-year-olds tugging at her hands. What followed was the worst vacation of her life. The twins were out of control, tearing around her small room like tornadoes. They ripped the curtains, broke glasses, and somehow managed to clog the toilet with apples. Elizabeth had to shell out money she didn't have for repairs and to call a plumber. By the end of the weekend, she was more exhausted than she had ever been. The final straw came when Kate had the audacity to complain about how tired she was from all the traveling. Elizabeth lost it. The argument that followed was epic. Elizabeth yelled, Mom cried, Kate sulked, and the twins screamed through it all. Elizabeth packed her bags that night and caught the first bus home in the morning. As she watched the coastline disappear behind her, she felt something shift inside. This couldn't go on. Something had to change. She dragged herself through the front door, exhaustion weighing heavily on her shoulders. Dad was in his usual spot, eyes glued to the TV. He barely grunted a hello as she passed. She crashed into bed that night, her mind a whirlwind of emotions and half-formed plans. When morning came, she knew what she had to do. She was halfway through packing her suitcase when she heard the front door slam. Mom's voice rang out, sharp and irritated. Elizabeth, where are you? She appeared in Elizabeth's doorway, her face flushed with anger. I can't believe you just left us there. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to manage the twins on our own? Elizabeth bit back a retort about how she managed the twins on her own all the time. Instead, she just kept packing. Mom's eyes narrowed as she took in the scene. What are you doing? I'm leaving, Elizabeth said, her voice steadier than she felt. I'm moving out. I need my own life. Their reactions were immediate and predictable. How can you be so selfish? Mom cried. After everything we've done for you. Dad's face turned red. You ungrateful girl. Have you thought about your sister? Who's going to help her with the twins? Elizabeth felt something snap inside her. My sister? What about me? When has anyone in this family ever thought about what I need? Elizabeth, Mom gasped. No, I'm serious, Elizabeth pressed on. Kate has a husband. Let him help with the kids. I need to focus on my own life. You listen here, young lady, Dad growled. If you walk out that door, don't expect us to keep paying for your college. You'll be on your own. Elizabeth looked at them both, these people who were supposed to love and support her unconditionally. In that moment, she realized they were strangers to her. Fine, she said, zipping up her suitcase. I'd rather be on my own than live like this. No personal life, no time for myself, just constant demands and screaming kids. I'm done. She pushed past them, dragging her suitcase down the stairs. They followed, still shouting, but she tuned them out as she reached for the door handle. Mom made one last attempt. If you leave now, don't bother coming back. Elizabeth paused, her hand on the doorknob, then without looking back, she opened the door and stepped out into the unknown. The next few weeks were a blur. She crashed on a classmate's couch while scrambling to find a more permanent solution. Eventually, she connected with a girl from her study group who was also looking for a roommate. They found a tiny apartment that they could just barely afford between the two of them. 
With her parents cutting her off financially, she had to pick up more shifts at the diner. She was working almost full-time on top of her classes. There were nights she thought she wouldn't make it. When the exhaustion was so deep, she could barely think straight. But you know what? For the first time in her life, she felt free. No one was making demands on her time, no one was guilting her into babysitting or putting their needs before her own. The apartment was small, her bed was a mattress on the floor, but it was hers. She threw herself into her studies with a determination she didn't know she possessed. Every all-nighter, every missed social event, every extra shift, it was all working towards her goal, her future. Before she knew it, two years had passed. As she sat in the auditorium on graduation day, waiting for her name to be called, she scanned the crowd. A small part of her hoped to see a familiar face, mom, dad, even Kate. But the seats she had reserved remained empty. Life after college was like stepping into a whole new world. She landed a job at a marketing firm, and suddenly she had a steady income that wasn't just scraping by. For the first time in years, she could breathe easy. She rented her own apartment, nothing fancy, but it was all hers. No roommates, no family drama, just peace and quiet. And let me tell you, it was glorious. She started doing all those normal things she had missed out on before. She went on dates, made new friends, even had a couple of short relationships. Nothing serious, but it was fun to just be young and carefree for once. Her parents were still in the picture, but barely. They talked maybe once a month, stilted conversations full of awkward silences and thinly veiled disapproval. They were still sore about her moving out, and she wasn't exactly rushing to mend fences. Then came her 25th birthday. She had plans with friends, nothing wild, just dinner and drinks, but a week before, she got a call from mom. Elizabeth, she said, her voice oddly cheerful. We want you to come over for your birthday. The whole family will be there. Against her better judgment, Elizabeth agreed. When she arrived at her parents' house, it was like stepping back in time. Kate and her husband were there, the twins, now seven years old, running around like little tornadoes. Various aunts, uncles, and cousins were all smiles and hugs. Happy birthday, Lizzie, they chorused as Elizabeth walked in. She plastered on a smile, accepting hugs and well wishes. Then came the gifts. Most were typical, clothes, books, gift cards. But then mom handed her an envelope with a flourish. This is from all of us, she said, beaming. Elizabeth opened it, her stomach sinking as she saw what was inside, a ticket to a beach resort. We're all going, dad announced proudly. A big family vacation. We've paid for everything. Elizabeth froze. A family vacation with the twins? It was her ruined beach trip all over again. She opened her mouth to refuse, but Mom squeezed her arm, whispering harshly, Don't you dare make a scene. Not in front of everyone. So Elizabeth smiled and thanked them, all the while screaming internally. The party wound down, relatives trickled out, and finally it was just them, Elizabeth, Mom, Dad, Kate, and her family. That's when Elizabeth let loose. I'm not going, she said flatly. What? Kate gasped. But it's a family trip. Exactly, Elizabeth replied. And I'm not interested in spending my vacation babysitting your kids again. Kate burst into tears. You don't love us at all, do you? You don't care about your nephews? I care about them just fine, Elizabeth snapped, but if I wanted kids, I'd have my own. The argument went round and round. Mom called her ungrateful, Dad looked disappointed, Kate kept crying. They all tried to guilt her, to pressure her into giving in. Fine, Elizabeth said finally, her voice tired. I'll go. They all looked relieved, like they had won some great victory, but they had no idea what was coming. The day of departure arrived, and Elizabeth found herself at the airport, surrounded by her overly cheerful family. Kate and her husband were practically bouncing with excitement already making plans for all the alone time they would have while Elizabeth watched the twins. You'll have so much fun with Aunt Lizzie, Kate told the boys, winking at Elizabeth. She'll take you to the beach, build sandcastles, maybe even go snorkeling. 
Mom and Dad were beaming too, going on about how nice it would be for Kate to have a break. Not once did anyone ask what Elizabeth wanted to do on this vacation. It was clear they all saw her as nothing more than a convenient babysitter. As they approached the check-in counter, Elizabeth made her move. Oh, she exclaimed, feigning discomfort. I need to use the restroom. You guys go ahead and check in. I'll meet you at the gate. They nodded, distracted by wrangling luggage and excited children. Elizabeth watched them join the queue, then turned and walked briskly in the opposite direction. Her heart was pounding as she approached a different check-in counter. She handed over her passport and the ticket she had bought weeks ago, a flight to a small, peaceful island resort. Once through security, she found a quiet corner and pulled out her phone. Her hand shook slightly as she typed out a message to mom. I'm not coming with you. I'm going on my own vacation. Enjoy your trip. She hit send and immediately turned off her phone, not wanting to deal with the fallout just yet. She could almost hear the explosion of anger and disbelief that would be happening at the other check-in counter. As she settled into her seat on the plane, she turned her phone back on briefly. It immediately exploded with notifications, missed calls, voicemails, angry texts. She listened to one voicemail from mom, her voice shrill and furious. Elizabeth Morgan, how dare you abandon your family like this? You've ruined everything. Your sister is in tears, her husband is furious. They were counting on you to watch the boys, and I had plans. You are the most selfish, ungrateful. As the plane took off, Elizabeth sipped her champagne and gazed out the window. The guilt was still there, a small knot in her stomach. She knew she would have to deal with the fallout eventually. There would be angry phone calls, tearful accusations, probably another round of being called selfish and ungrateful. But overwhelmingly, she felt free, light, like she could finally breathe for the first time in as long as she could remember. She was going on a trip that was just for her, no obligations, no babysitting, no family drama, just her, the beach, and whatever she decided she wanted to do. As the plane touched down on the small tropical island, Elizabeth felt a weight lift off her shoulders. The warm breeze that greeted her as she stepped off the plane seemed to whisper, Welcome to freedom. She checked into her resort, a modest but charming place right on the beach. As she unpacked, curiosity got the better of her, and she turned on her phone. Instantly, it exploded with notifications, hundreds of text messages, missed calls, and voicemails flooded in, a mix of amusement and trepidation. She scrolled through some of the messages. How could you do this to us? Mom. You ruined everything. Kate. You're so selfish, Elizabeth. Dad. She couldn't help but smile. For once, she had chosen herself over their demands. She turned the phone off again and tossed it into the hotel safe. For the next week, she was unreachable. And what a week it was. She lounged on the beach, read books uninterrupted, went snorkeling, and even tried her hand at surfing. She chatted with other vacationers, went on a few casual dates, and stayed out as late as she wanted. No schedule, no responsibilities, no screaming kids, just her and the rhythm of the waves. All too soon, it was time to head home. Elizabeth returned to her apartment, tanned, rested, and more centered than she had felt in years. But the real world was waiting to intrude on her newfound peace. The very next day, there was a pounding on her door. She opened it to find Mom and Kate, their faces red with anger. How dare you? Mom screeched, barging in without invitation. Do you have any idea what you've done? You ruined our entire vacation. The boys were devastated. Kate wasn't far behind. You're so selfish, Elizabeth. You ruined everything. You owe us for the ticket you bought for the vacation. You ruined it. You failed to provide childcare. Their voices overlapped as they hurled accusations and insults. She was selfish, ungrateful, a terrible daughter and sister. Elizabeth let them rant for a few minutes, their words washing over her without sticking. Then, calmly but firmly, she spoke. That's enough, she said, her voice cutting through their noise. I don't owe you anything. Not money, not childcare, not my time. 
I'm an adult, and I get to make my own choices. Mom opened her mouth to argue, but Elizabeth held up a hand. I'm not discussing this further. Please leave. When you're ready to treat me with respect and have a calm conversation, we can talk. Until then, I think it's best we don't communicate. They stared at her, shocked into silence. Then, with a few more choice words, they stormed out, the door slamming behind them. Elizabeth let out a long breath. It wasn't easy, but it felt right. Over the next few weeks, Elizabeth made some big changes. She found a new apartment in a different part of town and moved without telling her family her new address. She threw herself into her work and picked up some new hobbies, painting, yoga, even started learning a new language. It wasn't always easy. There were moments of doubt, pangs of guilt. But every time she came home to her peaceful apartment, every time she made plans without worrying about babysitting duties, every time she pursued a new interest just because she wanted to, she knew she had made the right choice. She didn't know what the future held. Maybe someday, her family and she would find a way to have a healthy relationship. Maybe not. But she did know this, she would face whatever came on her own terms, standing tall and unapologetic in the life she had chosen for herself.